Today I'm going to show you about a little bit more care and, and uh, maintenance troubleshooting for the Graco Field Laser S90. Uh, the S90 uh, is the world's first airless uh, high pressure low volume line marker and it is an exceptional piece of equipment. Uh, it's made to precision, uh, exacting precision that Graco make since they are the leading paint application uh, manufacturer in the world. Having done the uh, work with the Graco S90 for a number of months now, uh, I've learned a lot about the machine, become very intimate with it almost, and uh, so I'm just going to show you a couple of issues uh, that we found if you don't look after it properly. If you wash it out properly and make sure that it's all nice and clean after use, then you'll never have any problems and this should last you near on a lifetime. Uh, if you don't look after it, then these are the sort of problems you're going to have and this is how you're going to repair them. So the first things I'm going to do is uh, just remove the, the gun from the gun attachment holder. I'm going to take this out of the way just so I can show you how to do the gun. So remove that. So here we have the gun attachment. Uh, as it is a toolless operation in terms of normal cleaning, we have our precision tip in the tip holder so we can loosen that off, take the tip out and loosen this off and all of this can be cleaned after use just by putting it into a, a bowl of hot water and giving it a quick scrub. Uh, the barrel here of the Sure Shot again undoes by hand like that. And inside you have the filter which I've already cleaned out, or nearly cleaned out. So, and that, that should be fairly straightforward. One of the problems we found is in this bit of the gun, uh, and uh, you'll need a 17mm spanner just to loose that off, and then it undoes by hand. And what we find quite often, and although this is clean so you're not going to see lots of paint build up, in here is a plunger that operates when the machine's under high pressure it pushes the plunger and the paint is able to travel through these holes and out through that hole in the end of the nut. If you don't clean the machine out and paint packs and dries in here it prevents the plunger from opening and closing which means no paint will come out of here rendering the machine useless. So. If this is packed up with paint and there's no paint coming out of the machine, undo this nut with a 17mm spanner and you need to get some hot water and give it a light brush with maybe a toothbrush or something just to clean out the paint. And that's a fairly straightforward operation. When it's all nice and clean and you can test to make sure by pouring water in the top it will drain through those four holes. You can then replace the nut and do it up by hand and you quite literally only need to just do a less than a quarter turn just to tighten it up and then it's back working again. Okay, the other problem, the second problem that I've come across with the Graco S90 machine uh, is in the, uh, uh, the actual pump. So uh, just to show you what I'll do uh, and what happens is if I tip this up like this, fortunately there's no paint or water in there. But if we look in here, we have a removable filter that sits on those four lugs. It's a wide gauze, and the reason for the wide gauze is it allows maximum suction uh, with the vacuum because it's airless system, it allows the paint to move freely straight into the pump. Occasionally, what I've found uh, is that if I remove the filter when I'm cleaning the machine, if there's been any build up or residue, of paint, so we have uh, solidifying paint around the outside of that. If I take the filter away, then the paint has the opportunity to fall down the hole and get sucked straight into the pump. And when it does that, then there is a tendency for the pump to uh, stick, so it won't work properly. Uh, the easiest and quickest way of getting rid of that is to get a hose pipe, take the filter off, get a hose pipe, and spray it straight down this hole and remove, keep the machine tipped up like this 
and uh, it will blow out any residue that's stuck in there and then hopefully the pump work again you could also use a bit of guard armor uh, which is provided in the bottle uh, just to lubricate the pump run it through the pump uh, for a couple of seconds and then everything will be fine again The, the plunger inside this barrel working again and the nut on and tightened up we can now put the machine gun back together again so filter goes in, it can only go in one way as we've shown before try and put it in the other way the lugs prevent it from going down the barrel so there's no mistake there, it only goes in one way so we put the filter in screw up the second half of the gun barrel back in only needs to be hand tight and then we can attach the tip guard back in and I usually do this up nearly till it's tight before I put the tip in and I also when I set up the machine because this bar is going to sit on there that guard has to be in line parallel because the spray comes out at an angle like that um, but I always like to have the, uh, the reversible tip on the outside so if for any reason there was a blockage in the paint and I need to stop the machine, turn it round, blow it out again and it's easily accessible from this side of the machine because on this side you've got the support bar. So I make sure that's nearly up, make sure the hole for the tip is on the back side opposite this before I insert tip into the gun like that make sure it's in fully if it doesn't go in fully it won't be in line with the uh, hole in the gun and then at that point you can tighten it up clip the primer pipe back on and I'll just reach back over here the support tighten that up ready gun is then set back on there and adjusted at the height that you would like to spray. In an ideal world if I just turn the machine around a little bit and you set up the machine, set up the machine and if you want a two inch line, a three inch line, four inch line you just move these accordingly either way or both, drop them out a little bit further like that. And then usually what I do is set the, the uh, nozzle spray so that the fans are just touching about 5mm up the bottom of the guards on each side. That way you're losing very little paint, all of the paint's getting evenly distributed across the leaves in the middle of the line and very little of it's hitting the sides and running down and, and leaving a line on the edge. So that's something you'd set up in the field to get it right. And on this bar there are actually lines so you can put a mark on so you always know what height you want to mark at. Just little tips.